Welcome once again inside TD Arena here in downtown Charleston for another episode of Inside the Lines here on CFCSports.com. I'm Jeff McCarriger. A lot to get to this week, both the men's and women's basketball teams in action, of course. And how about the volleyball team? Fresh off a conference championship win over Furman. Now has their sights set on the NCAA tournament. But first things first, we'll start with the College of Charleston men's basketball team taking on number 21 Baylor. CFC men looking for their first win against a top 25 opponent since 2009 against North Carolina. Baylor up 2-0 early. Isaiah Austin gets the feed in transition and jams at home. Uh-oh, Baylor is up 4-0 early, but just a little bit later, Baylor up 4-3 and Anthony Stitt drains a three from the left side for the Cougars as they get their first lead of the game. Now the teams would trade the lead a few times in the early going here. Andrew Lawrence gets the Cougars back on top with a long three. And it's CFC back up on top by 198. Cougars played some good defense as well. Anthony Stitt intercepts a pass from AJ Walton, brings it up court, eventually finding Nori Johnson for the wide open three point attempt, and he drains it. Tie game at 14. Ajay Baru also getting into the act. He had a huge game. Nice jump hook shot with the right hand from the paint. Two points for the big man. More offense later coming up here for the Cougars. This time, Lawrence, one of his eight assists, finds Matt Sundberg wide open for the tray, and Sundberg knocks it down to make it 24-18 Cougars. CFC would hit the break up by 5-31-26, second half. Baylor would come out hot after the break. Gary Franklin hits the three and ties it up quickly at 31. And just moments later, another three-pointer coming up. This time, Pierre Jackson, he had a big game, and Baylor Reed takes the lead, 35-33. Now even more Baylor, a couple of dunks. First, Jamison Morgan with a one-handed stuff. And then one more strong finish about four minutes later, coming up by big Corey Jefferson. Baylor with some big guys down low, and that would make it 48-46, Baylor Bears. The Cougars, though, would not be denied. Here they come again, this time up 52-50, and it's Nori Johnson. Third three-pointer of the game coming up. Comes off a screen in the corner. Loves that shot. 55-50 to 50 College of Charleston. They can smell it. They haven't won on the road against a top 25 opponent since 1993. And they do it this time. Charleston wins it over number 21 Baylor by a final of 63-59. Their first top 25 road win since taking on Georgia Tech in 93. And as you can see, the Giant Killers are definitely back. College of Charleston with some big wins since 2009, going back to that November 28th win against South Carolina in overtime. And of course, the win against number nine, North Carolina, on January 4th back in 2010, that three-point overtime victory right here inside TD Arena. Then at Tennessee, home against Tennessee, and this season, big wins against BCS programs, Boston College, and of course, over the weekend at number 21, Baylor. This week, right here on CFCSports.com, our weekly podcast with head coach Doug Wojcik. He talked about the big win over the Baylor Bears. What a great confidence builder, and, and what a good early win for you and your era here as well. Good, good chance for you guys to all come together on the road. Yeah, timing's everything. Uh, you know, say you don't win the game. I mean, life moves on. You have a game on Wednesday, but the, the timing of winning the game and, and winning against a, a, a Big 12 opponent, a ranked opponent on the road, it just helps the whole program. It helps the university. It helps just the karma that goes with what's going on. And, and um, you know, sometimes you, you have that, sometimes you don't. Business has the same thing. Timing right. is everything. And fortunately, we had great timing right now. Big win for the guys over number 21, Baylor, as the Giant Killers are definitely back. But Coach Wojcik on his podcast was also quick to point out can't uh, stop from looking forward to Charleston Southern, a big game against their I-26 rival coming up on Wednesday. Take a look at the matchup between these two teams. Again, College of Charleston now 3-2 and two on the season. Charleston Southern 1-4, and four, but the Buccaneers have played a very tough schedule. They're scoring the basketball pretty well at 68 points per game. However, they have really struggled from the field as they're shooting just 36.7%. And from three-point range, as you can see, Charleston Southern has struggled at 32%. Meanwhile, for Charleston, they've been red hot from the field 45% as a team. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll catch up with the women's basketball team and the volleyball team continues to be hot coming off their Southern Conference Championship win over Furman. Now they've got their sights set on the NCAA tournament. We'll be back with all that as we return right here on Inside the Lines on CFCSports.com. Uncaged isn't just some catchphrase at the College of Charleston. Uncaged is a mantra, pounding, reverberating, screaming in our heads, in every serve, every dig, every spike. Uncaged is a sonic boom, 
It's the moment of impact when the cleats strike, sending the ball like a blazing comet into the back of the net. Uncaged is pure physics. It's a pendulum of torque, of mass multiplied by acceleration, matched with the precision and nerve of an artillery gunner. Uncaged is laser focus. It's pinpoint concentration between hand and eye that would make a Zen Buddhist break into a sweat. Uncaged is flight. It's every muscle working in perfect union to extend, to twist, to defy gravity. Uncaged is raw power. What was once a leap to the basket is now transformed into everlasting glory. A split second for the ages. And for those of us in the stands, uncaged is joy. It's a jumping out of your seat, embracing any and everyone, howling euphoria. At the College of Charleston, uncaged is everything. Welcome back to Inside the Lines here on CFCSports.com. Programming note for you that College of Charleston men's basketball game against Charleston Southern on Wednesday night will be the first of our 10 televised games this year. You can catch it locally on MyTV Charleston and also online at WatchESPN.com. Tip off at 730 of the broadcast with Hall of Fame coach John Cress and Nate Ross. Now for men's basketball, on to volleyball. Volleyball team obviously has had a great season coming off their Southern Conference championship win against Furman. Now has their sights set on the NCAA tournament. We'll take a look at the Jason Kepner era as he has really had some great success since 2007. Three times going to the NCAA tournament, twice meeting Florida, and now they'll take on number 23 Miami. It's the seventh NCAA appearance, NCAA appearance all time for the College of Charleston. Now, the last time they won an NCAA tournament game goes back to 2005 in a 3-1 win over North Carolina. First ever meeting coming up against Miami this weekend. Got a chance to catch up with Coach and the girls about that matchup. I think they're a pretty balanced team. I think in the matches that they've played, the, the setter does a very good job of distributing to, to all hitters. I really think they want to force the middle as much as they can, but uh, they, they do send, set the ball to the outside and they run the right side as much as, as, much as possible. I think they had five all-conference players uh, in the ACC, which means they're, they're a pretty balanced team throughout the season. I think at first like, you're a little overwhelmed because like NCAAs, there's a lot of good teams, but after we got like, our draw, I think that we have a certain, like, a similar mentality. Like, I feel like it's a team that we can definitely beat if we focus on what we need to focus on, just like we did in Furman and Sanford. So I feel like if we focus on what we need to do, then we have a really good chance of beating the team we got seated with. Um, between Kelly, Kirsten, and I, we were the only three that went to that tournament, and none of us played in that match. Um, but being there, I think we can hope the, help the youngins get ready for that kind of environment. You know, Florida has a big gym. There's usually a band there. It's loud. It's crazy. And I think as long as we kind of keep everybody emotionally steady and emotionally prepared for what we're about to walk into, um, I think that's a good step that we can that we can give the newcomers. Again, congratulations to the volleyball team on the Southern Conference Championship win against Furman. Now they go to the NCAA tournament, looking for their first NCAA tournament win since 2005. We'll switch over to women's basketball now. Coach Adair has done a terrific job, obviously, with her team. Off to a 2-3 and three start, but they faced a very tough schedule, and they've got Winthrop coming up now this week. Look at the comparison between the first five games of this year versus last year and coach Ader has really had a good effect on this year's team as scoring is up by about eight points per game opponents scoring now looks higher at 64.8 versus 59.6 but keep in mind 103 points against UConn if you take that out the opponent scoring average goes down to 55 so really they've done a good job they just ran into obviously one of the toughest teams in the country in the UConn women rebounding is higher turnovers are lower it's been a great start in the first five games for the team um, I'm very excited about just where we are as a team. Um, am I excited about the outcome in, in Ohio? No. But I've, I saw my team grow up and I saw my team fight against a very good MAC team and a very good Big East team. And I mean, it was down the stretch. It was a two possession, three possession game. And, and so 
what I'm very pleased to know is I have interchangeable parts. Uh, we can go deeper than even I thought we were going to go. Uh, I saw some people step up that, that I didn't know a week ago had it in them. So going into this week, you know, we have a good team tomorrow in Winthrop, and then we start con conference play this weekend. I'm very excited about where my team is overall. Uh, I'm excited about their mindset, and they're hungry. You know, I talked to them after the Cincinnati game, and, and I talked about in this loss, we got better. Uh, and, and I'm not big on moral victories by no means, but I'm honest, and I'm honest with them. Once again, the women back in action on Wednesday against Winthrop. That'll wrap up this week's episode of Inside the Lines. Don't forget, you can always tweet us or you can email us your question of the week. You can contact us. We'd like to pass along your questions to any of the coaches or players. If you have them, pass them along to cfcsports at gmail.com or you can tweet us at cfcvideo. And again, tweet us your questions or email us your questions. We'll pass them along to uh, the players and the coaches and have them actually answer the questions for you each week right here on Inside the Lines. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you again next week right here on CFC Sports. Sports.com.